Hi, welcome to Robojax. In this video, I'm going to introduce the PCA9685 servo controller by NXP Semiconductor. This is a 16 channel, 12 bit uh, module that can control or produce pulse weight modulation, PWM, that can be used for servo and also it can be used for bank of LEDs to dim it. So each of these can be controlled individually, meaning that you can set this separately at different angles, also you can set the other one. Or you can set multiple or all of them to do the same thing or different thing. All the code, the library, the manual, and all the information that you need to run a successful project for this video is available at the description, or you can directly go to robojax.com slash learn slash Arduino to get all the codes. Also, I'm looking forward to your suggestion and comments. So, if you have a, a robot, something like this, for example, it has six arm and each arm needs two servo, you can have up to 12 use here. So this uh, servo controller can do that for you. So let me explain the board. So the board is 25 millimeter by 60 millimeter. This is the size, it has four screw holes so you can screw it on a, um, some place uh, secure. And it has 16 channels. 16 channels mean you can connect up, up, up to 16 servo channels. So here are the wires and it starts from 0 uh, and also it has been labeled here 0 to 15. Servo always has three cables here. The lower one usually with a darker or black this will be the ground then the positive is always at the middle and then the signal is always the light color. The reason they put the positive at the middle, so even if you make mistake to put it in reverse, the positive is always at the middle, so it will be safe not to damage the servo. And here, fortunately, the cable that I have is matching the color here, so that's brown, red, and yellow, and you insert the uh, servo like that. And then you can connect next, next, and all the servos. Then we have here, we have these pens, we have here VCC, this goes to 5 volts, you can get it from Arduino, and this is the ground. So these two are 5 volts, you can connect it directly to Arduino. This V plus here, at this port, this is connected to the main power. So all these servos cannot be powered with Arduino, so they have been independently connected. This is the ground, and this is the positive. Then we have three more wires here. This, the DE, you don't need it here for this application. We have SDA yeah, and then we have SCL. SCL is a clock, that's a data. You just need to connect these two. This will be connected to pin 4 and this will be connected to pin 5. SDA will be connected to pin 4 and SCL, the clock, will be connected to pin 5 here to the analog input of the Arduino board. Um, you must make sure that you provide 5 volts with higher current for this because first of all if you try to power it from Arduino you might damage your Arduino board because Arduino cannot supply enough current for all of this. If you're using just one of them maybe that would work but if you're using multiple of this you have to supply separate 5 volts high current for the uh, for the board you can connect four boards like this and each will have 16 so four times 16 you will get 64 servos can be controlled so the only difference would be you have to connect another header here and then you will connect it to the next one so the same thing you can connect the cable select and SDA to the next one so the data will go and then if you have one extra board just solder this part the next board will be activated. If you have the third board, so then we can go with a binary here, 0, 1, and 1, 0. This one, this is 1, and all of these are 0, so that would be board 1. And when if you have board 2, so this is 0, this will be connected. If you have 3, this and this will be connected. Four, so for the fourth, you will have only connected this one, and uh, it will work. 
So here I'm showing you here now the wiring practically so SDA is here the green one which is connected to pen 4 as you can see and then SCL the clock one which is blue I've connected it to 5 and then the VCC is connected to 5 volts and then ground is connected to the ground and then here I've connected this wire with this crocodile clip which I supply separate 5 volts from my power supply. So for the Adafruit Pulsed Modulation Servo will be provided. You will, once you come to this page just click on the clone and click on the download and save it wherever you are saving your file. So I'm just saving it here. After that just go to your folder wherever you have saved it and then right click on the file using 7-zip you have if you don't have 7-zip go get it from 7-zip.org it's free just select extract here once that is complete it will create a folder with the same name called Adafruit PWM servo driver library here just right click it and then go to it wherever you have your Arduino mine is here Arduino library and just somewhere in the blank area right click and then paste it once you paste it here I have the other fruit library and close this to open the uh, file just go click on file examples and then scroll until you see other fruit library so here is the servo and then that's pulse with modulation test click on servo and this will be opened we'll go through this but you don't need it this is for testing and other stuff and I will give you just simple example so you can run for one servo and then replicate the same thing for multiple servos. These shoes are required, the wire and then the servo pulse width modulation. These are the header file that is needed. Once you install the mm, uh, library, this will be included so you don't have to worry. So these are all comments. This is a counter variable of 8-bit but don't worry do not touch it it's just used internally the setup from here to here this set up sets up the serial monitor to display the code for you and this is also another text prints this will print that and then this is the main one which it says pulse modulation dot begin so this will initialize the library to prepare communicating with the board and then set pulse width modulation 60 so that sets it at 60 hertz update this yield is used here when all the initialization happens we use yield to make making sure that the other process that takes longer will be done and after that it will proceed so this yield waits for everything else to be completed and then proceed for now uh, for the system to work these are the uh, servo pulse which you do not use here the servo pulse is a method that starts from here to here this is just for testing different pulse width there is the main loop that runs the code for you the main loop starts from here to here and it prints the servo number on the screen and then it goes with a pulse length that we set and then the servo minimum and maximum so this is a value for the servo and it continuously goes and sets for the servo number this is a value that sets each servo so this servo num is a value that goes 0 1 2 3 whatever up to 15 if you have 15 of those this means if you want to control one servo just put the servo number here so this is minimum if it rotates the servo in one direction this will uh, rotate it into the other direction and wait half a second and then just increment so this increment means here it goes up to 9 so this is the main factor uh, determining how many if you have 16 just put 15 so remember that it starts from 0 to 15 that's 16 so if you have 4 just set this to 3 
uh, code that I've updated for simplification. I've removed the other method. The setup is still stays the same, and then the loop. Inside the loop, I just put this is the number of the servo. So if you have connected it to the zero, so you put that as zero, and if you are putting it at, at, at any other number, just change it accordingly. The value, the pulse that, that you're running, it can go according to the documentation of a servo. It can go from 0 to 4096. But uh, the pulse that you're sending, the length that you're sending is very important to see at what length this can stop or start. So now to make it observable, I just put the uh, piece of tape there so now you will see which side is the one of the side we will use it as a reference so that is 0 and that is 180 so this can go 180 degrees for the servo so considering that we have to set the minimum and maximum of this servo and we have to see at what pulse uh, length it can go to the minimum and to maximum to start with initial set of the minimum is 150 but let's see at 150 where it goes if I upload the code that is 150 it says here now let me reduce it and see what happens let me make it 140 let's see if it goes mm, more to that direction a little more you saw that it went more so we have to see if it can go more 30 so that is setting the minimum we have to find for each servo that you're using we have to find the minimum it went more I'm going for 120 it went more that's very important if I make it 110 now it makes noise I don't know if you can hear it, let me get it closer to the microphone. So this is the noise and that means this servo can get damaged if I continue using this value. So let me go for 120, even 120 is at the edge, so which means I have to go a little higher, let me go 125, 125 is the lowest value that we have. So for for the servo, uh, you have to find the value. For the upper value, here they suggest 600. Uh, I was reading this um, uh, header file that they included with the CPP and this header file. They have a limitation. So if you go higher, this will not allow it to go. For So that pass, pulse weight, the maximum will move it this way. Make this 600. And let's see which we did because now I have a black tape there. So I commented the, the previous one, so it, it comes up to here. So let me increase it and see if it can go further because we know the lower value will move it this way. So let's see if it can go the other way. The code is uploaded, we didn't see any difference. So we have to go backward and tell, see what value is affecting it and at what value it stops affecting. So 650 doesn't have anything, so we know 600 is doing something, but how about if we make 550? Because we don't know at what value it stops. 550 moves it back, so how about 570? A little, so 570, let's make it 580. If it moves, we have to pay attention and listen. No difference. 570, maybe 575. So 575 brought it a little back. So 575 is the value for this servo. Now I found these values. Now we can use mapping to say that, okay, uh, 125 is 0 degrees and 575 is 180 degrees. And based on that, we can control this at the exact angle that we want. Okay, I've changed the values here for servo min and for servo max. 
the value that I found for the servo minimum I put it here at 125 and 575 for the max and then here here is how we do the mapping so let's say you want to move the servo 280 degrees integer angle is equal 180 that's my angle stored in this variable and the map which is a method in Arduino it gets a value here for example angle 180 and we say the value of 0 to 180 map it to 125 to 575 so this is a, a constant variable that I have here so I can put also a number so map function or method uh, is just mapping minimum and maximum to another minimum and maximum because we want 0 to 180 degrees should be translated to uh, between 125 to 575 so this will do it and the result will be stored in the pulse and then we use the pulse here now if I make this 90 it, it will also print here on the screen so we see it here now so now it's at 90 degrees so 90 is equal to 350 so you don't have to calculate the pulse because this will do it for you 20 so 120 is equal to 425 I've created this method and I am calling it angle to pulse so it receives an integer same thing that I've, I've described and at the end it just says uh, return the type is integer so this will return the pulse which is integer so it goes back now to use it we just use angle to pulse and then put the value so this was the value that we were putting so now I'm putting it so in verse 65 and also prints it on the screen which I don't know what value it is so now let's see it it moves to 65 and 65 is equal to 278 so now I have written this for loop so integer angle starts from 0 initializes and then angle is smaller than until angle is smaller than 181 then angle being incremented 20 degrees so this for loop printing and passing the value of the angle which is first this will be 20 and then 60 80 and so forth until 180 it goes and comes back and it starts so here we wait for one second so let me upload the code so you can see the values here and then waits and comes back so this way you can send any angle that uh, you wish code will be provided the original code the main function that I initially created and the changes that I made will be available at by clicking at the description below. This was the introduction to this PCA9685 module. Thank you for watching. Please thumb up the video and also please share it and subscribe. I appreciate it.